Hi and welcome back. This is Meg and I am happy to be here with you today. Uh, I've pulled out this little booklet which I have for sale on my um, Etsy page and it's a Zentangle sweet little journal with every page has an ink spot and the story behind this little journal is that apparently Maria from the Zentangle Empire <laughs> went on a trip and someone she didn't know that she needed to put her micron pens in her carry-on luggage and she packed them in her packed luggage and the pressure in the uh, storage area made her pens explode and ruined one of her favorite journals and so she was very upset because her favorite journal was ruined or sketchbook and and she decided that consistent with the Zentangle method she would say no mistakes there are no accidents it's okay I can work with this and so she decided to continue working in that sketchbook and to simply enjoy it as is. And so they made this little sketchbook um, in homage to that or, you know, um, for all of us. And so if you'd like to have one, I'm not sure if you can buy these separately on the Zentangle website, um, but I know that you can buy one from me, so I buy them by a, a, in a group. So feel free to check it out and then tangle along with me if you want. I haven't started this little booklet and I thought that um, I could do a series of videos working in this little booklet and um, maybe if there are those of you out there who enjoy that then I can keep going with it and we can uh, do a little project together. So um, with this one and you know it's interesting when they have a border like this like this this part I, I, I can't decide I'm a little on the fence about whether I want this thing to match in some way or what but I think what I've decided to do is go with kind of a a flowery theme because I've been pushing myself to do tangles that um, I don't do all the time and I've been practicing a couple of new ones so I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna teach you a couple of those here are a couple to show you right here is one I just love and there's another one that has sort of a pansy look to it and so these were ones I just did uh, today in this other book and I thought that um, I could teach you those and several others like it. And we could do that on these in this nice book. So the first one I'm going to start with is this great tangle that um, is, I, I'm not sure if I'm doing the same tangle as they meant to do when they when they had it online in this, but they called it Diva Dance. And I, I think I'm not doing Diva Dance. I think I'm doing something else that looks a little bit like it or uses some of the same strokes. But Nevertheless, it's okay. I'm gonna, it's I'm not sure to, whether to call it that or call it something different. But anyway, I'm going to use this Micron PN pen, which is a nice fine tip nylon pen. Um, I think it has, let's see if it tells me what the tip size is. It doesn't, it just says Archival Ink Micron Pigma PN. So... I kind of like it. It does have its waterproof and it has fade-proof fine lines, which I like a lot, especially for something like this that it's a kind of a little bit of a keepsake, if you will. So you kind of can start anywhere with this tangle, and the way that it goes is that you start by making a small circular line like that, and then right about where you started the line, add a little lump to it and color it in. And then further around that line, add another little lump. And, and it's really not necessary to try to make these uniform in any way. And a little further, I draw a little bit more line, and then I add another lump. And then draw a little more, and add another lump. And this is the way this tangle is done. And the effect of this is this really cool... I don't know if you'd look, I mean, I always think it kind of looks like cabbage. You know, in fact, I think I've heard Maria or Rick describe it that way and say, it's like they cut a cabbage in two, and this is what you see um, as the inside of the cabbage as a pattern, which is pretty neat. And so as you go around adding these lumps, they don't all have to be bump lumps. They can be sort of spread out ones and you know nobody knows better than you what this thing looks like because it's a made up thing so just add your little lumps and enjoy the process of filling them in inking them in nice and slowly I'm not in any hurry to do this 
It's already looking interesting, isn't it? It's one of the most, I think, um, visually powerful tangles that I know, and yet I don't use it very much. I used to, but I've kind of gotten away from it. I think I forgot about it. Just why it's good to keep practicing and taking classes. That's what I do. I take, I do the project packs from Zendangle from time to time. And that helps me stay up on my practice and also learn from other people what they're doing. I also post a lot of my tiles to the Zentangle Mosaic app. There's an app, and it does cost money, the app itself. And it is where Zentangle artists post their tiles for each other to see. And there's tons of inspiration there, as you can imagine. So I encourage you to check that out if you haven't purchased that or didn't even know about it. It's, it's well worth it. I see a lot of stuff there that inspires me or I simply go, wow, I have no idea how to do that. I want to learn it. So I keep going around and adding these little lumps just like this. And you can see it's not doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's it kind of looks better if it has more of an organic look. If it were perfect and everything were spaced, I don't, well, first of all, I don't think I could do it perfectly. And second, I don't think it would be as interesting. But if you have the desire to try to do this in a very symmetrical way, I'm sure it could look interesting. It's kind of, you know, the closer that you do this outer line to the one beneath it, the more mm, kind of, I don't know, intense it kind of looks, you know. So if you can do those lines kind of close together like that, that gives you a nice effect. Yeah. do little touch-ups as I go. It's okay to turn the book. I forget sometimes. Just turn the book, Meg. You don't have to struggle. <laughs> How about that? That comes out so cool. I kind of make my lumps a little bigger as my circle gets wider. And each time going around the lump beneath it, like that. See how I've curved around that lump? That's, again, kind of what makes this pattern look so interesting is the way that it curves around itself. Like that. And you know, it's done when you say it's done. So I think that's enough for this one. I do want to put a couple more on this page, so I don't want to wear out my energy <laughs> for this pattern on the first one. But I'd like to end it in an interesting way, so I'm just going to do that. There we go. And I'll do another one over here, random start, and go back and add some lumps here. I'm hopeful that this tangle will have a very layered look and that I'll be able to show you some techniques around layering your tangles because I feel like that's really where some of the magic is in the Zentangle process is visually, once you're done with it, it's got this beautiful uh, layered look sometimes depending on how you've done it. It's one of my favorite elements of it, so I'm going to try to show you some of that today. Sure appreciate your comments. I want to call out Susan specifically. You know who you are, Susie. Thank you for your comments and for following along and enjoying this process and learning. I really appreciate it. And um, it just gives me real joy to know that I'm reaching somebody. <laughs> and that you're enjoying learning and um, you know that's why I'm doing it if 
So it's your comments and encouragement that keep me going. And in fact, I haven't uh, tangled um, on camera in a while. I don't know, I think I was just a little depressed. <sighs> this pandemic and getting everything back, to, trying to get back to something normal, really, I'm having a little, I was having a little hard time. I, I think I'm doing better today, but <clears throat> some days I really struggle with motivation to even, you know, I sort of think, well, what's the point? Why bother? And I, I take that to be mostly about the pandemic, but, you know, March, I'm sorry, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Every month has two or three different things we're supposed to be aware of, but <laughs> this month is Mental Health Awareness, and um, that has, has had me thinking about mental health quite a bit and my own mental health. And, you know, I was even yesterday just thinking about how we can talk about, you know, needing to see a podiatrist or needing to see a pulmono pulmonologist or needing to see a surgeon or any number of problems and diseases and, you know, physical ailments. But we are not very comfortable at all talking about mental health. And, and I, I don't know, you know, because of the stigmatism around uh, mental mental health and lack of mental health or wellness, I should say. And so it um, it's so interesting too, isn't it, that your brain is, gosh, your most powerful and amazing um, muscle and organ, right? And yet we're not supposed to talk about it when it's not working right or when it's got us down. And I know that's changing and, you know, people talk about it a lot more now than they used to. It used to be, you know, you couldn't even admit you were seeing a therapist or something like that. But, you know, people are now, it's, it's more um, cool to see a therapist, I guess. And I'm glad because we need to make it possible for people to see whatever doctor they want for any purpose and not have any sort of stigma or, you know, whatever it might be. But I think also we have to be able to talk to each other, people that we perceive as well, and, pe and when people perceive us as well, we have to be able to say, I'm not that well. I, you know, we have to be able to say, really, I'm so glad that I seem that way, but I'm just coping. I'm just putting one foot in front of the other these days. And, you know, my, what's that song, a smile I wear on my face? Um, the Tears of a Clown, <laughs> I think is the song I'm thinking of. As the, the, the smile I wear on my face is something, something. I can't remember how it goes. But that's that's kind of how I feel about it is that, you know, a lot of people, myself included sometimes, are walking around the world with a smile on our face and maybe even a, a little twinkle in our eye or a jump in the step, you know. But you just don't know what people are going through. And... Uh, these days, I think we should just assume that people are struggling. Everybody's got, having a hard time, and even the ones who aren't having a high to hard time will appreciate the kindness <laughs> and the gentleness that comes with being supportive to other people, right, who are having a hard time. I'm going to do one more of these because they are coming out so cool. And Zentangle has been an incredible... A tool for me in my mental health and my um, well ability to concentrate, focus, pay attention. Um, I've mentioned that before in previous videos. Certainly helpful to me in those ways. And those things, you know, being able to concentrate, pay attention, and take notes effectively, and participate in meetings effectively, and those types of things improve my mental health, right? Because I want to be effective and I want to be a contributor and um, to be able to be meaningful in the interactions that I'm in, etc. So, you know, Zentangle has for me not just been a, an artistic outlet, but a very much a mental health and wellness um, outlet. I want to make sure I'm sitting up straight here and Breathing deeply. Get the oxygen to my brain so I get the full benefit of this time. Just 
no need to hurry. It comes together eventually. And this is such a lovely pattern. You could stop it and pick it up later if you wanted to. Easy to pick up and continue with. You could fill a whole page just with this one thing. You really could. It would be so neat. Wouldn't it? <laughs> I've never done it, but I think it would be pretty interesting. It might be interesting to do it with different colors. You know, a few bands of one color and another few bands of another color and see it sort of bloom, blossom out, right? That would be kind of neat, I think. When I'm doing these patterns that layer on top of each other, some things that I have learned are that it's helpful to do the biggest things first because later you won't have room for them. And but that said, you know, if you do big things later, then you will have more of an opportunity to hide some of the pieces. If I were going to do something big here, I have to do it under this these existing pieces, which we're going to do. But um, the the larger things that you want to have, you know, the whole thing show, you have to put them down first, so that they. Uh, don't have to be behind other things. What you, what you put down first is going to be on top, right? If you think about it like that. As you're doing this, you'll see, you know, you can sort of tuck little ones in on the inside of the line as well. They don't all have to come out. You don't have to do all the lumps on the top like that. That's just an easy way to memorize or remember how to do it. But you can draw the line and you can, you know, tuck something in underneath or wrap a, a lump around the corner like that. It's very organic and very unplanned. Just go a little distance and create the lump and then go a little more. See? There we go. This one's got a real cool wave to it. You can always also go like this, go all the way around it. See how I'm doing? Sorry, a little off camera there. I just go all the way around it like that till I get to where it's blank and then add these in. Put all of my little lumpy things where I want them on top of that. Sometimes I just make the line a little thicker. It doesn't have to be a full, full lump. It can just be where the, the line gets a little thicker, like that. I think that will be the end of it, this one. Here we go. Aren't those cool? They are so neat. Okay, now I'm going to do something that's kind of like a pansy. And I just saw this woman do these the other day and they were so cool. So, the way you do it, pretty simple. Just make a little lump in the middle. That's the middle of the pansy. And then each petal comes out of it. And when you, when you do the second petal, it comes out of the middle of the third one. Or the, I'm sorry, this is the first one. That's the second. When I do the third petal, I came out of the middle of the second one. And now I'm going to do the fourth one out of the middle of the third one. Do you see? So I'm each time beginning at a different place and putting a petal of a slightly different shape. See? Coming out of the other ones. And that's what gives it this effect of growing out like that. So pretty. There. That's as big as I wanted. <laughs> Now, I don't know totally what to do inside of this, but I think what I'm going to start with is kind of an aura 
because it's got such a remarkable, I think, shape. So I'm going to aura inside of each of these little spaces just for fun. See what that does for me. It might be that it comes to, when it comes to shading, that's where it's really going to come alive. So I don't want to overwork these pansies because I've seen them in another um, execution and they're real simple and very pretty and elegant. So I don't want to overdo it here just because they look sort of plain. I think I can make them quite lovely like this. I kind of get this graphic look to it, which I like. I like it a little too close there. Isn't that nice? I love the way that comes out. All right, I'm going to do another one over here because I'm kind of going for a garden, you know, garden look, all floral, you know, just a blossoming garden. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to do one up here. And you don't want this to be a timid little flower. You know, nice big leaves or, or petals are totally fine. In fact, a little shape to them gives them character and makes it really look like it's something found in nature. Here we go. Let me do one more there. Pretty. Now I'll do the same thing inside of that, a kind of aura, nice and tight inside that line. If you're new to Zentangle, sometimes people just pick up a random video. This might be your very first. I say welcome. I hope that you enjoy it. If you're a subscriber, thank you for coming back. If you're not a subscriber, I hope you will subscribe. You know, subscribing doesn't actually do anything to hurt. I, I have found myself. It just puts your favorite channels in a list in YouTube so that when you go on your YouTube channel your things get served up, things you're interested in especially the new videos from your subscribed um, channels and then um, you know you get a curated selection which I, th I find kind of nice to be honest so you see these flowers are kind of the same scale not not entirely dissimilar in look or size and so at this point it's pretty important to me that I start to introduce different shaped things and so um, one of the things that I've learned more recently that I find I didn't think I would like at all but I have really enjoyed every time I've done it and so um, you know I'm not good with the names so I'll have to look it up so is to draw a line which is going to be kind of the center or the um, skeleton of your leafy thing. And then draw some lines up like this, which are going to be the additional leafy skeleton parts. And then almost as if you have taken a whole bunch of some kind of drug and your hand, or you've drunk a lot of coffee, and your hand is shaking like this. It's a shaky hand. I want you to go up and around. We're going to basically aura the whole thing, but kind of wide, not real close like this. Kind of wide, aura the whole thing with this shaky hand. And what we're going to get is this very lettuce uh, edge. Okay? go like this good and I didn't think I liked this but you know with other things it is really cool <laughs> 
and I'm just beginning to find that I, I like it more and more. There's one. I'm going to do another one coming out of this side, maybe like right into the middle, because I really want this to look very organic and like a very, uh, maybe almost weedy garden. See? And I'm going to do the same thing. Wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Very unpredictable. Very unpredictable. It goes all over the place. My goodness. That is the craziest what kind of plant is it? There we go. See there? Now I might just do one more because I, th I generally like things in threes. And I did three of these. I did only two of those because I felt like I was using up too much space with those big things. But I generally like things in threes because I just think it looks more right. And so I'm going to go put one up here. Just a littler one like this. Like a new newborn thing. And wiggly, 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 wiggly. It's not that easy <laughs> to wiggle your hand like this. But, you know, you've seen things in nature that are like this, right? That are just as kind of almost haphazard, you know? That is a fun one. I love that tangle. So we'll leave that like that for now. And then I think I'd like to do some... Um, Vertigo. That is one I do know the name of. <laughs> and it's one w that is was designed um, uh, by looking at rosemary branches. And so I'm going to do that one. And it's quite a, a beautiful one and is will look sort of familiar to you because one, you know what rosemary looks like probably. And also because it's just not that unusual looking. But when you put it down this way, it is beautiful in my opinion. So I'm doing these long cylindrical cylindrical um, leaves. Maybe they look they look like fern leaves and I'm deliberately leaving a little space in between them because I'm going to put something in there in just a second. So I'm just putting these in nice and that little pew off the edge is just some flare, right? Just give it a little character your pen kind of travel a little bit up there and then come back right gives it that mm, little effect of nature <laughs> all right do the same thing over here and they get a little smaller as they go to the top Hmm. Now, I want to do some going another direction because the way those leaves nestle in, they're never perfectly aligned. So I'm going to go in here and do one that goes behind in a hollow ball fashion, as we say in Zentangle. And then I'll do another one here that overlaps. You see how that does? And we'll go down here and do one. I'll make it overlap. See? And then I'll do that down here. And back down on this side. And there. Now I'm going to go back and fill in some more, going the regular direction behind the ones I just did. You see? It gives this beautiful layered effect. I just fit a few more in until I feel like it's done. Take a nice deep breath.
We just got a new dog at my house, and she's new to us. She's not new to the world, but she is precious. The sweetest pit bull. So, so sweet. And we are working with a trainer and make sure that she's safe to take out and be with people and dogs and all the things that people are afraid of pit bulls about. And I've had them before, and they're wonderful pets. Wonderful. They do not deserve their bad rap. But they are dangerous because they are good biters. And they, just like any dog, um, the difference is, of course, pit bulls have a stronger bite than most dogs. And some have been bred to be hurtful. So you just want to make sure you're careful. And there we go. Look at that. Cool, huh? I'm going to leave that one alone like that for now. Now I think I'll do some poke root. Poke root is a fun, fun tangle. And this is what it looks like. A little stem. Like that right there. Did a little stem. A little frown, or a, a, a cap. Maria, Maria says a cap, I say a little frown. And then fill in these little corners right there. Just a little tiny bit. And then coming out of the stem, be generous and give it a big circle like that. And then another one comes out over here. Sneaky little booger. And nice generous size circles. I found myself doing these much too small previously and they're cute but they don't have nearly the same um, I don't know cool factor as these great big weird Dr. Seuss kind of balls <laughs> that look like they come from some other planet. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. I'm make them just poking out from behind this leaf. Poke root is the name of that. And I'll poke a few more over here. here. And they don't all have to be big. They could be some, you could have some little ones down here that are just growing. You know, new ones, new little poke roots. I kind of want to call them poke berries because I think they look like cherries or berries so much more than a root. But I don't know why they got the name root. I do feel like I know that why they say poke because they poke right there. <laughs> there are some poke roots in there. How about some on this side? Coming out over here. What's fun about poke roots, you can sort of tuck them in anywhere. You know, just a little doop. Just tuck it in there. Even if there's not enough room for one, right? So just doing it like that gives that appearance that they're growing in behind this thing, which I think is a cool contrast because of the this lettucey edge along with these nice round orbs is really pretty. See there? There's a nice contrast. And when we shade them, we'll be able to see that even more, I think. And there we go. A little bit smaller one. Maybe, um, I'm trying to see where else. It's kind of weird not having anything black down here. It feels like there's no, no border, I don't know. There we go. Okay, I think that's good for now. My poke roots and the 
other ones as well. And now, let me see here. What about the, um... I'm just thinking. <laughs> you know, I have so many different types of things I like to do in these. I think I'll squeeze in some, some bubbles and some little orbs in here. They just, like little bubbles that get caught in those, in those little places in this, in the, um, between the leaves. And I do, you know, a couple of small ones, a couple of big ones. Oops, that one's in the leaf. How about that? Huh. Um, I squeeze them in here like this. Like little bubbles that have formed. I don't know where where they came from, but there they are. It's not my fault. Like berries, maybe. They kind of look like berries on that leaf. Pretty cool. Let's see, what else should we put in there? I do like this one flower leaf thing <laughs> that um, I've seen Maria do, and I've done it a couple of times, but maybe only a couple, so you'll have to see if, if I can execute this. And it's, and it's kind of a, it's got a longish stem like this. Maybe I want to make it a little curved. And it is, she uses this thing called Bronx Cheer, which is a way of covering up a mistake. And the way she does it is this, it makes these little, squiggly circles over the place that she messed up. Now I didn't mess up on this part. I'm just showing you how she does it. And this flower is, I think she calls it like a Bronx cheer spear or maybe a Bronx spear, that's what it is. And you go all the way up the spear and making it up as you go along what the shape of a Bronx spear is we're going to make it one that goes up, up, up and ends with that little, this little thing all by itself. And I'm making, I'm just making these little um, berries or whatever you want to call them just by, you know, circling around and around a couple of times, kind of in a messy fashion. They shouldn't be perfect or else it doesn't look real. Because <laughs> nothing that's real is perfect. So I'll just make it like that. There we go. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I do like that. And so I think I'll have to insert another one over here. And, um, you know, and also I like to do something a little more with this stem. Something like this. I learned that from Maria. She just fills in the stem with this little triangular shape, which is cool. And now I'll do another one. It's pretty crowded in here, but I think it can look pretty cool because I love the look of these crowded um, gardens like this. Okay, so start up here. Oh, you do have to put a few kind of outside the what you what starts to form as the shape of it because then it's you don't want it to be too uniform. I like it. It's coming together. What do you think? 
I think I might have to do another one of these over here somewhere just to balance it, you know, something that balances that a little bit. It's awfully big. Maybe I will do this. Sometimes I do this just to, just because I like the way it looks. I'll make a little sort of um, a border around it like this. It's a little, it's kind of a false, you know, I don't know what to say, like a false border. It just gives this framed in look. And then it makes it look like the, the artwork goes outside of the border a little bit, which is a cool effect always. Look at there, see? There, that's pretty neat. Well, let's do a little shading because I'm aware of the, the length of this one and I think you probably want to know how do I shade these things? My goodness. Okay, so they're all going to be different, you know, and one thing I want to say is be careful that you're not rubbing your hand all the way across it and getting the, 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 the pencil all up and down your hands and rubbing it on there. So turn your page a lot, as, ever, as often as you need to, to make sure that you keep yourself from rubbing it. And so where I'm going to start is just kind of over here on the right, and I'm going to put a line of graphite along the spine of this lettuce -y thing first, and then I'll follow those lines. And, you know, I'm going to be smudging these a little bit later, so I'm just lightly smut putting my graphite on the inside of this in also a squiggly-ish line. I don't know how this is going to look. I, I've not done this way before, so I'm just going with my gut and trying to avoid having too much graphite everywhere, right? Because it just then it just becomes this big muddy mess. And so I'm going. I'm I'm also going to add graphite wherever the um, these cherry things uh, lay on top of something else so that there's a little bit of a shadow behind it. And then I'm going to do the same thing here with these leaves. Wherever one lays on top of another one, it gets a little love, a little extra graphite to create the sense of shadow there. A little bit in between them. Lot of overlapping there. Now on this one, I'm going to put a little graphite right around that middle part, and then I'm going to use my pencil to put some graphite kind of coming out of each petal, but not go around the top of the petal. I don't know, again, if this is going to totally work, but I'm trying to just create a little bit of depth inside of this flower without filling in the whole thing with graphite. So I'm hoping that by doing it kind of around each, the bottom and the edge of each petal, but not really all of the petal, right? That, that I'll be able to smudge a bit, but not the whole thing, <laughs> and get a little depth in there. And I really like that. And then I think I'll go around the whole thing with my pencil and put graphite, just a thin line of graphite around the whole thing. I might regret that. I might get a little too muddy in there. But it's okay. There we go. Now this one, I just really dig it. I love the way it looks if you push the graphite in. So what I'm going to do is be pretty heavy-handed and kind of color in almost the first full ring 
right? Put a lot of graphite on that one because I'm going to push it in with my tortillon and it looks cool. <laughs> giving that a lot. Like that. And then this Bronx Cheer, I'm going to go around the outside edge, inside of it, but at the outside portion. I'll try to leave the middle a little white. Uh, this one I did like this, and then just these edges like this. Try not to make it all too muddy. There. And the inside here, a whole bunch. And then down the spine, and along the lines of the spine, and around this inner edge of the lettuce -y looking part. And then these I like to do a little bit here, emphasize that, emphasize where they lay over each other. And then on the outer edge of each of the cherries, or getting a little thicker towards the bottom, we're going to give those a three-dimensional curved look this way. When we smudge it, it'll look a little better. Everything looks a little better smudgy, don't you think? Well, now what I didn't do so far on this one is I did not um, really use the, the black part, you know, the, um, the, this, the ink blot. And so what I might do is uh, after, afterwards, or maybe if we have time on this one, I will go back maybe with my white pen and do some work in there. I don't know. We'll have to see. I kind of like this one just like this. There's no reason I have to use the black spot. It kind of just looks like it's the hillside that these things are growing out of, in my opinion. And I like that. There we go. Here we go. It's some more cherries over here. All right, let's see. Let's get my tortillon out here and see what I can do. I might go upside down. <laughs> see, they're just cherries. Oh, I think I'm a little off screen there, sorry. You see, I'm just sort of scratching and smudging, not putting a lot of attention into the lines on that piece. It doesn't need a lot. And then this one, as I said, I like the way it looks when I smudge in. So I'm just pulling that graphite in. And it's a big enough flower that it can accommodate, accept this much graphite and still remain pretty white in the center. See there? It's not very dark on my screen right now, so I'm not sure what you're, if you're going to be able to really tell, you know, 
sometimes the light in here is not cooperative to being able to see the nuances of the shadowing. But hopefully you'll see the three-dimensional nature of these little pokeberry things. This one is a bit of an experiment. Yeah, I like it. Hmm. Huh. I have to keep playing with that one. I'm not sure if I, this is my favorite shading treatment for that. Maybe I'll smudge it a little bit into the petals, even though I said I wasn't going to do that. I feel like it needs it. <laughs> Looks a little too stark that way. Okay, now over here, we're getting to the home stretch. On this one, it's looking great, I think. I hope you're loving it too. Very satisfying to see it come to life with the shading and things pop off the screen or pop off the page, you know? I tried to do some tangling on an iPad the other day and, you know, I could do it. It, it just wasn't as fun. It's just not as tactile. There's st the, p the paper is missing. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I could make interesting designs, but for what reason? I just couldn't figure it out. I just wasn't into it. For me, it's about the paper, pen, pencil. So I think it's looking pretty good. And I zoomed out so you could see the whole thing. I'm going to stop on it for now. I hope you're excited about yours and enjoying it. You might want to keep putting more things on. I might put some more on mine. Might leave it like this. This is darker shading on my side than you can see on the screen, I can tell. So it's... Uh... Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. This is Meg Steele. You've been on my channel, and I hope that you'll like and subscribe, and uh, those things really help me, as well as comment and tell me what you liked or didn't like and what would be helpful for the future. If you'd like me to spend more time on certain types of tangles or explain things differently, please let me know. I'd be happy to give it my best shot. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.